Jo. children we all know how important a good education is for our children's futures. We all want our children to receive a quality education that provides them every opportunity to be successful in their lives. As a parent I share in your concerns of making sure our children receive every advantage to achieve those bright futures that we want for them. We've all heard on the news how our local school systems have been struggling to meet the government's academic achievement levels. As a parent this concerns me greatly as I sure as I'm sure it does you also. I see this as a giant red flag that change in our educational system is definitely needed. Out of this concern, I've been researching the idea of year-round education, and that's why I've asked you here to go over what that would mean for our children. While change is never easy, it is my belief that we must proceed with making changes if the current system is going to continue to fail our children in providing them with what they need to complete, compete in the global marketplace of their future. Today I will define what a year-round education calendar would look like, some of the statistics and benefits, and how it would affect the children of our community. Year-round education is a choice, is a choice that, to improve our children's education and their futures. There is a need for change in our school systems as we continue to lag behind other foreign countries and what their children's achievement scores are. This graph shows you that in the U.S. we have a mandate of 180 days of in-class instruction. Germany and Japan, their students receive a minimum of 240 days of in-class instruction. Some educators think that we not only do not spend enough time in class, but we do not spend enough of that time covering the core academics like English, science, history, language arts, and foreign language. The congressionally appointed National Education Commission on Time and Learning in a 1994 report said that those German, French, and Japanese students receive more than twice as much of the core academic studies as our American students do, and they still find time to participate in extracurricular activities. Now, year-round education does not necessarily mean that the children go to school 365 days a year. An example of a year-round education calendar would be this 45-15 or balanced calendar. It still has the exact 180 days of classroom instruction, just like a traditional September to June calendar. This is the breakdown. They would go to school 45 days, and this is Monday through Friday days. They would have a fall break of 15 days or 3 weeks, 30 days of in-class, a Thanksgiving break of 3 days, an additional 15 days of in-class, followed by your winter break of 3 weeks or 15 days, 45 days in class, spring break 15 days, 45 days in class, ending in a summer break of 30 days before they move on to the next grade level. It doesn't make them spend more days in school, it simply reorganizes the time that they are spending in school so that they are better served. Some of the statistics would show you the traditional calendar has an extended summer break, the balanced calendar has a 30-day summer break, the, the winter breaks and the spring breaks are a little bit longer with the balanced calendar, but they all still do equal the same 180 days of classroom instruction. According to a report by the National Association for Year-Round Education, in the 2006 and 7 school year, there were 46 states, including Washington, D.C., that participated with a year-round calendar, over 3,100 public, private, and charter schools, and approximately 2.2 million students were enrolled in year-round education in that school year. I made a list of some of the benefits that I feel like would affect our children, there are increased student achievement scores. 
The breaks allow for enrichment classes. They do not have to stay at home during their breaks. The schools are open and they usually provide enrichment, remedial courses, whatever the student would need. Family vacations are still possible and they're actually spread out throughout the year instead of everybody trying to do it during the summer. The students stay in learning mode year round instead of taking a, a two to three month break and relaxing and forgetting a lot. A quote from that a report titled The Prisoners of Time from a 1994 report by the Congressionally Appointed National Education Commission on Time and Learning stated, Time is the missing element in our great national debate about learning and the need for higher standards for all students. One of those problems with the long summer break is what they are coining the phrase summer learning loss. This is Summer break was actually designed when we were an agricultural society. The children were needed at home with their families to help bring in the crops. Today's modern society, we're not functioning that way any longer. The children do not participate in the family farms the way they did then. During that long summer break, there has been tests to show and studies that there are loss of math, spelling, and some reading skills. Psychology professor Harris M. Cooper did a 1996 study and confirmed that there are definite losses in these skills. The first five to six weeks of the new school year are spent in review. That's five to six weeks our children lose on their new education for the following year. A 39 study review found that there are achievement test scores that decline after that long break. Students score higher in the fall, or, excuse me, before their summer break than they do when they come back from summer break. Some of the frequently asked questions was, does the year-round calendar actually make a difference in overall learning? Dr. Charles Ballinger, who is the executive director of NAYRE, says research is convincing that the education calendars do make a difference in overall learning. What about family time and vacations? That's what most people worry about, that they lose their family summer vacations. The calendar doesn't take away from your family time. It spreads time out over the course of the year in 15-day breaks, and you still have a 30-day summer break. That's three weeks for a spring break, three weeks for a fall break. You still get your Christmas break and your 30-day summer. You can take vacations during any of those times. The next steps for us as parents that I see is that we all need to stay involved in our children's education and always know to try to guide them in the best direction that's going to benefit them for their future. We need to educate our friends and neighbors on year-round education and what the, that means and the benefits that we would be bringing. We can talk to our educators in our school system and get their opinions and views on how that would affect them. And then we would need to start discussions with our school board system. In conclusion, I'm asking for everyone to keep an open mind when it comes to making our changes in our education system. Change is not always easy and it's not always welcomed at first. We often get into a rut simply due to force of habit. If we do not stand up and make the needed changes, our children will continue to receive a subpar education by world standards. As one of the richest and most advanced nations of the world, we should have one of the best education systems available for our children. Since education is an issue that is mainly handled at a local level, I feel it is up to us as a community to come together and research the alternatives and find a way to enrich the educational opportunities that we are offering our children and the generations to follow them. Today I've discussed a number of the benefits of year-round education. Hopefully I've dispelled some of the misconceptions of what a year-round education calendar is like. There are those who do not support year-round education and they state that there's not enough evidence to prove that it will actually make any positive changes to our children's education. With that, I would argue that the traditional calendar isn't making much of a difference either. It's no longer providing anything other than an average education to our children. I'm not looking to change things just for the sake of change, but we cannot expect our children to achieve higher goals if we do not provide them the tools to do so and to compete in the global marketplace with their counterparts. Thank you.